So good morning. Great to be back with you again. And I am so glad that you are here. Listen, I know Saturdays are busy for everybody, and it means a lot that you're here checking out what's new in the world of health and medicine. Says a lot about you. Says that you care about your health, and that puts you well ahead of the crowd. So good on you. We're going to start today with a topic that is a little bit sensitive. Uh, We're going to be talking today about a problem that really half of men under age 40 suffer from time to time. And then as you get older, old guys like me, uh, it becomes far more common, and that is erectile dysfunction. There are pills, of course, and lots of other things that you can do, but we're going to be talking about using sound waves to actually treat the cause of this problem. And in the course of that conversation, we're going to be talking about male anatomy, uh, arousal, uh, what happens inside the body, and if that is uncomfortable for you, hey, I get it, it's okay. Hit that button for a little while and come back at the bottom of the hour, get some more interesting things to talk about. But I do hope you'll stay tuned because this really is a significant challenge for a lot of guys. And there is some interesting new technology that's available to help you cure the source of that problem. And we're gonna learn about that talking to Dr. Greg Hogue. He is the founder of the ED Clinics of Indiana. Good to see you, thank you for coming in this morning. Good to be here. Glad to have you here. So uh, tell me the science behind this. You're actually using sound waves yes. to recreate a blood supply. Right. Well, again, it started from a machine that they used to shatter kidney stones. And they found that the waves they used that shattered the stone also had a healing effect on the kidneys. And so they took the machine and they took it apart and made it less powerful and figured out that the sound waves they use are the same waves that stimulate the body to grow as if you were to work out or as uh, as anything that would make your body grow. It's the machine, anywhere you put the machine on the human body, it will stimulate growth and repair. And somebody figured out that it would be good for ED. And that's where I came in and started to look in and and research that. Interesting. So I have read, you know, I'm pretty much a big old nerd and do a lot of homework, uh, but I've read that they use this sound wave because of those very principles that Mm -hmm. it causes regeneration of tissue and they call it neovascularization. It causes growth of of new blood supply. Mm -hmm. And uh, they use it in tendons. Yep. Uh, particularly in horses, but also in humans. They use it for wound healing. Have you seen any of that kind of influence? Yes, I've had people with diabetes. I've had two people that had wounds that just would not heal and put them on the machine and and the tissue revives and heals. That takes a while. It's not a, it's not, you don't get one treatment. It takes uh, for something like a bad chronic case of uh, Achilles tendonitis, it might take two or three months or a bad knee that, could be replaced, but uh-huh. you can bring it back sometimes. It will take two or three months. Yeah, so the science behind this treatment is it's pretty well established. Yes. It's out there, and it works. So now in treating erectile dysfunction, mm-hmm. what kind of results are you seeing? Good, very good. Uh, I, don't, I think maybe around 70% would be reasonable to say. Wow, that's pretty yep. good. Mm-hmm. So does that matter? You know, half of men under age 40 have this mm-hmm. problem at some time, or mm-hmm. I mean over age 40, over age have 40. this problem at some mm-hmm. time. Is it true that if I get the treatment when I start in younger, yes. it's going to be more effective mm-hmm. than older? Yes. Well, the fact is, is, anything, again, what we were talking about earlier, you, you, you don't use it, you lose it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've had guys come in in their late 30s, early 40s, and they're concerned for the last three to six months, things aren't working right. They come in and my goodness, it's, it's almost a shoe in they're gonna get better because it's just at the beginning. So the tissue doesn't have to be revived as much. We don't have that much atrophy. We don't have that much breakdown. And I always tell them, I said, now you're, you're back. I have several guys who come in two and three times a year who are young and for whatever reason at a young age started to have problems, well, we keep them going. And as long as uh, they can get the treatment, they will remain sexually active and successful. What about uh, the other end of the scale, 70s, mm-hmm. even, even, even beyond? Yeah. Well, earlier as we talked too, um, not only um, age, but you have the criteria of health, uh, what makes a person, uh, if they have diabetes, they have that heart trouble, overweight, 
those kind of people, uh, there's a red flag comes up. If you're less than five years, um, chances are good. Um, I've had people, I had a man 82 years old. I told him, I don't think this is going to help you. It did. Huh. So, you know, there's, I would say, a 50-50 chance for people over 60. I see it. How many, how many people do you think you've treated in the past several years? Oh, well over 200. And a 70% success rate. Yeah, I, would th- I really think so. That's pretty good. So this is, you said it's not one and done. What's a typical course of treatment? Well, we do six treatments, one a week for six weeks. And that suffices for a lot of men. Some men need another six. Mm. It just depends on the person. We're going to talk uh, a little bit later in, in greater detail about exactly what happens during the treatment. But, mm-hmm. you know, I want to cover something that, you know, guys just may not understand sort of the anatomy involved here. Right. And it's really pretty simple. Inside your penis are two kind of tubular columns mm-hmm. of a very spongy tissue. Right. And during arousal, what happens is the muscles around the, uh, the veins and the arteries expand and lets more blood in. Mm-hmm. And so you can have ED from two real reasons, according to the research I've done. One of them is you don't get enough blood in, or you can't hold that blood in, yes. in, that, in those two spongy columns. Mm-hmm. And so what we're talking about here is the sound waves. So if those blood vessels are damaged or just mm-hmm. atrophied yes. you know, as we age, things happen. Um, so we're actually causing minute bits of damage. Mm-hmm. Then what does the body, how, how does that stimulate regrowth? Well, it's the same thing as if you go to the gym. You stress the bicep. You'll see in a muscle magazine or something, you'll see a guy with a great big muscle and have big garden hose veins. Well, when they exercise their arm, the bone, the muscle, the tendon, all of the tissue revives and grows. You don't just get a bigger bicep, you get a bigger arm, mm-hmm. period. It mm-hmm. grows, you can see the, the, mus- the bone sticking. And so the stimulation of these waves stress the tissue as if you exercised it. That stressing is it's, it's how, the, how God made our bodies. When you stress the body in a specific way, it grows and revives. The machine sends that exact type of wave into the tissue, whatever it hits, tendon, ligament, bone, muscle, skin, it revives it and it starts to grow. You know, you mentioned bone. I, one of the pieces of research I came across, they're using this sound wave therapy to help regrow bone in cancer patients. So yes. to your point that it mm-hmm. does kind of regenerate the body, causes stimulate something in the body to make that happen. Um, so six treatments, how long mm-hmm. does each treatment take? About 20 minutes. And then is it painful? You will feel it. You'll feel like a mild, mild prickly feeling that it's if I always ask the patient and if it seems too much, I can always lower it. But 99% of the time, it's quite tolerable. You can feel it, but it's tolerable. So any reason does it, do I have to like not do any mechanical work or kind of no heavy lifting, anything after each treatment? The only thing that you shouldn't do is take a, uh, any kind of ibuprofen or aspirin or anything because those things stop inflammation. And what we just did was inflame the tissue in a very positive way to stimulate it to grow. I see. And if you take ibuprofen during this treatment, it will, it will uh, slow it down. Got it. Okay. I I tell men to come in. I said, if you take ibuprofen, you're going to have to quit for a while. There's other natural things you can take for pain that you would have to, you can substitute. Wait, since you mentioned the word natural, when we come back after commercial break, we're going to talk about a a new element that you've added to the Mm -hmm. the protocol to naturally increase the amount of uh, nitric oxide in your body. We'll talk about the connection between that and erectile dysfunction as we continue our conversation here with Dr. Greg Hogue from ED Clinics of Indiana on the Health Coast live radio hour on WoWo. And we're back to our conversation about uh, using sound waves to treat erectile dysfunction. Our guest today is Dr. Greg Hogue. He is the founder of the ED Clinics of Indiana. If you have a question, of course, the phones are open. You can call us at 800-333-1190. But if well, if you're just a little too shy for that, that's okay. We got you covered. You can send a text to 46862, 46862, and I'll receive it here. Put that question to Dr. Greg Hogue. So you've been doing this treatment for a while, and a couple hundred guys, you said, 70% success rate. But you've kind of also discovered a few things along the way. Tell me, tell me what you've learned. Well, again, I find that 
during the treatment, it's like, okay, if you take two young boys, one kid's out running around all the time, playing, uh, riding his bike, playing football, all that. Another kid sits in front of the TV and plays computer games. When they're both growing up, the guy that did the more activity is going to be stronger and better. So I found that if you take five milligrams of C, they say no drugs. Well, when we're done, you don't have to have the drugs. But five milligrams of Cialis and uh, citrulline, every citrulline, which makes nitric oxide. We'll talk a little bit more of that. Both of those items stimulate the dilation and opening of the arteries. And you do that while you're building, while you stress with the machine, you get a really good result. Okay. Let's, Better than I used to. Let's walk back through that. So I'm taking Cialis, mm-hmm. which is a medication for yes. erectile dysfunction. What is there about Cialis that's different than Sildenafil or Viagra? How, why that one? Well, Cialis stays in your bloodstream a lot longer. And uh, a lot of people, when they first start getting ED, if they take five milligrams of Cialis a day, will give them enough where they can get a good erection after all anyway. Mm-hmm. So you get a guy in there that's uh, not able to get erection. You give him Cialis, that's going to open up the arteries and, and stress and exercise the tissue and as, as well as the nitric oxide. And it's going to make you grow better because you're stressing it in a positive way more. And citrulline Mm -hmm. is a precursor to nitric oxide. Yes. Uh So I think if I recall right, nitric oxide is involved in vasodilation. So it allows your your veins to expand and carry more blood, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So citrulline is a natural precursor to nitric oxide. So citrulline, is it just a supplement I get at a drugstore or something? You can get it. Not a prescription? No. uh -uh. Okay. And I think I read watermelon contains a lot of citrulline. Right. It's kind of funny. Uh, So uh, citrulline and Cialis. Uh during the treatment process yes. mm-hmm. and then are you thinking I'm, i don't need the cialis afterwards i think once once you get sustainable and and we're successful you can let that go i think some men who are older and especially like diabetic people or something like that with diabetes the treatment will last about two years and but so you, you want to really do everything you can to sustain blood fl- blood flow i think the average man this older can quit the uh, Cialis, but citrulline, nitric oxide itself is critical even in a young man. If you don't have nitric oxide, you will not have a good erection because it's part of the chemical cascade that goes through your mind and body that triggers an erection. So as we age, we make less nitric oxide, which also contributes to a bad erection. Yeah, you know, it makes sense because they, they talk about if you're a bodybuilder, a weightlifter, mm-hmm. performance guy like mm-hmm. that, they talk about having a nitric oxide yes. supplement yes. before you go to the gym. Right. It makes your workout more effective for just yes. exactly Same the reason. Thing. Yeah. Same okay. way. That makes sense. So, um, you know, I have talked to guys who are uh, kind of disillusioned with. Um, the ED meds, you know, if, mm. if you're using Viagra, you're supposed to take it, I think I read an hour before, right. and then on an empty stomach, and that kind of just makes the whole intimate experience sort of mechanical. Oh, yeah. Well, the idea is, as well with that, is we want to do our best to restore people to their natural function. Um, we want those blood vessels. These things do not have a sustainable effect. They have a temporary effect. But just as the same way you can heal a bad knee or a bad ankle, or we want to restore you back to what you were. And I don't see why anybody would want anything else but to be naturally able as a man to continue. Mm-hmm. And one quick thing, almost everybody who comes to me, almost everybody are men who just want to reconnect with their wives. Hmm. I don't get a lot of young guys coming in there. You know, I get, I, I say I've only had a couple who really were questionable about their motives. But out of the over 200 I've treated, it's married men who want to get back and connect with their wives in that intimate way. And mm-hmm. they don't want to lose that. Yeah. So what have you heard from wives? Well, they're very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have told you the last time I was here. I was going into Casa, and and a couple were going out. She said, quick, stop. I want to give Dr. Hogue a high five for the success that it's given you. (laughs) (laughs) That's fun. (laughs) That's great. There are a lot of different causes for Mm. uh, ED. Yes. And um, so are there people who just are not good candidates for this treatment? Well, again, um, diabetes, not well managed, uh, way overweight, 
the process of being overweight uh, just messes with your hormones and your whole body. Um, well, yeah, that, uh, if you're overweight, it, it, mm-hmm. yes, especially just obesity itself suppresses testosterone, yes. which also plays a role in all of this. Yes. So I get that. That yes. makes sense. Mm-hmm. One thing I find what brings this on too, a common cause is a man will ha- his wife will die, or he'll get a divorce. And his sexual activity at a critical time in his life, let's say you have a guy 60, 61, and all of a sudden he quits having regular sexual activity, that is a, he's, he's going to go down. Mm-hmm. A lot of times that's the, bad, the worst time and men come in. I've had several men now. My wife has died. I haven't had sex for a while. I'm dating a girl and I want to think about getting married and having that again. And if it's over five years, it's tough. Yeah. But under five years, you'll find these men will come around if they're healthy otherwise. So let's talk about cost. Now that I'm sure this, I mean, none mm-hmm. of the ED drugs are covered by insurance. I'm no. sure this would not be either. No. Tell me about the cost. It's um, $3,200 for six treatments. Um, East and West Coast are a lot more expensive. Even in Indianapolis, it's more expensive. I <laughs> sought out a good, reasonable, balanced price mid-range to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, uh, to your point, I was looking at uh, the urology groups that are offering this service on the mm-hmm. East and the West Coast, and the cost is substantially higher, $4,000, $5,000 or more. Mm-hmm. So right. I get that. So if, if I go through the six treatments and I have some positive impact, how long is that likely to last? Well, again, it's different with everybody. Um, a lot of times it, that's also open, but... I'll tell men that, you know, within a year to two years, you might have some trouble again. Uh, Some guys don't. I would say more people will. Uh, I have now got a maintenance cost of $300 for treatment to come in and maintain, and I have guys coming in two, three, four times a year, and they're maintained. So there is a good chance that if you're going bad, you have to have regular sex, you have to have uh, good physical activity, and uh, it, it, the treatments need to be repeated at mm-hmm. times for people. And, and that's, if you want to keep going, you got to keep at it, you know. Well, I know, I, 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 looking at you, I mean, I, I don't mind, I don't think you're going to mind uh, no. me sharing that you're over age 70. Yeah. You're in great physical condition. I'm sure you tell guys as well, hey man, you, you got to get off the couch, right? You yep. do some lifestyle counseling, don't you? Yes, I do. I've had guys, I said, you've got to lose about 30 pounds and get your uh, A1Cs down and balanced out. Come back and talk to me again. And I had one guy who did that. Uh-huh. And he was successful, but a lot of people just, they don't do it. Yeah. And so it's not going to work. Yeah, those lifestyle challenges, they're really tough. Yes. Okay, so um, walk me through the process. If I'm interested in learning more, what do I need to do? Your your web address is edclinicsofindiana.com, mm-hmm. so you can find the phone number and everything there. Yes. But then how do you screen me as I'm a, a potential candidate? Talk me through that process. Well, what we do, now we're doing this, we have a $50 consultation charge, and if you go ahead and take the treatment, that is put into the treatment. You come in, you give me a a health history, we sit and we talk. Um, I'll talk to you for an hour if you need to, and and I don't care if you you want to or not, it's up to you, but we thoroughly talk, we understand where you come from, your age, we try to weigh all the factors and really get a good picture of your, how, what your candidacy is gonna be like. And, I, and, I, and I've heard you say, you, you're going to tell guys, I just don't think this is going to work for you, or, or you think you're a good candidate. You'll be honest with them in that yes, regard. Yes, yes. And you do something, um, I saw this mentioned elsewhere, do you do the SHIM, and, and what is that? The sexual health oh, yeah, inventory? Yeah, right, right, yeah. yeah it, it's just a small questionnaire that uh, talks about, uh, uh, are you able to get erection, are you able to follow through, uh, different questions that ask how your sexual health is at that t- when they come in and that's quite uh, it, it helps a lot to see yeah, just a screening tool it's right. a screening treatment okay. if you get a guy in his 30s and he comes back and he uh, is just a little low on all of those things you can pretty well assure that person you know if you get a guy that's older and his scores are very low you have to say i'm sorry but i just i don't know you know, uh, I, I'm glad you were here. I think a lot of guys are going to be interested in learning more about this. And, uh, you know, it's not a problem you need to live with. There's things you can do about it if you're experiencing erectile dysfunction. And one thing you can do is uh, talk with Dr. Greg Hogue from the ED Clinics of Indiana. You'll find them online at edclinicsofindiana.com. Dr. Hogue, thanks. Thank you.